What's up guys? So today we're going to be looking at and hopefully uh, repairing a Mackie SRM 450. Uh, this is a V1. Uh, it's having the typical distorted sound um, through the horn and the woofer. Um, and this is a pretty common problem on these and more often than not it's a dry joint on the board of the amp. Um, this one's going to be a little bit more difficult to judge because, as you can see, there's a little bit of a woofer repair job because this is the original woofer. We didn't want to get rid of it. So we used uh, contact tape or whatever, permanent hold tape for scrap looking. And around the edges, I just did a tiny little bit of hot glue just to make sure it's really air sealed. But I did not hot glue it at the top here because you do not want to mess with the suspension. And then it has another one on the other side. And as you can see, it's perfect again, right? That's besides the point. We're not doing a woofer repair. If you guys really want to see that uh, in the future, I don't know if I'm going to be reconing this bad boy or not, but this was a uh, out of a Mackie SRM 450. This was the one with the uh, smaller dust cap. You know, the one with the little China dust cap, right? You know, one of those ones, but, uh, you know, that's whatever. That might be reconed. I don't know. I used the paper from that to repair in Italy one, or oh, USA, I don't remember which one this is. Anyway, it's the same problem Mackie SRM 450s from this time period. Ni uh, late 90s, early 2000s, like uh, 99 through um, maybe 2003. That's a pretty good time date. Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and tear this guy apart. Um, as you can see, this is one of my personal Mackies, so you guys really know what's going on here. Um, we're going to tip it down. This is kind of a parts Mackie, to be honest with you, but uh, the amp and it's still all right. Ish, right? It has distortion and everything, but, you know, other than that, it's good. This is a backup Mackie. Um, my main Italy, my main workhorses are up on stands right now in my room. Right here. Those are my main workhorses. There's a USA. Here's this one. There's another two or three in the garage down there, but... Um, that's all besides the point. So let me try to prop you guys up here where you can see what's going on. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the screws off of the back of this guy. I'm trying to get this in a good angle here. So you're going to ignore these six up here. These just go to a blank cover. So you're going to remove these three on the amp, right? You're going to remove these three, all of the ones going down the side, right? And then you're going to go there's three on the bottom, and then there's these ones going up. You do not need to remove, let me show you, here, let me rotate this bad boy around. Ugh. Also, this one's missing, like this stuff, like these, as I said. Um, but anyway, you do not need to remove this screw here. Um, I've seen people do that. This is just to hold on the uh, board that has the um, power switch and stuff on it. So you just need to remove these three, there's one already gone because I already removed it before I went live. And you're going to go around the edges of this guy and you're going to get the amp off. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. Um, unscrewing them, you should be fine using a drill. Uh, putting them back in, I would use a drill just a teeny, teeny little bit, but I would not squeeze the trigger very hard because you really don't want to strip them out. Alright, so you're just going to go ahead and go around. Go ahead and get it out. There's two of them. Oh, missed a little bit. There we go. These are worth repairing. These speakers are very much worth repairing um, because they are very nice. Um, you really can't get them like this anymore, to be honest with you. But uh, we're going to keep going off on this here. Just keep removing them. Now, before you get all these, before you uh, go and pry up on the amp, uh, watch when I'm done getting these screws out. There's a special way you got to do this or you're going to break your speaker. All right. And it, don't be scared. I mean, don't stop the repair now that you're doing. And, you know, be freaked out to do it. I'm just saying, if you lift up on this side here, if you lift up on the top side, you're going to end up ripping the wires right off your amp. Okay? So you always want to lift up from the bottom where the power switch is. Okay. On our 
last screw here. So I'm going to put the Mackie down flat. Okay, so you're going <clears> to <throat> go from this heat sink here and you're going to use it for your leverage and you're going to pull up like so. You're going to hold it here and you're going to flip it up. And this is why you don't want to lift from the other side. So you can see, you get those wires going up. So you have your horn, your tweeter, and then you got your power indicator LED right there. All right. So what you're going to do, oh, got my phone, Damn it. did it twice, huh? Got a live stream. Uh, someone said, where is Gabriel? Uh, he is not going to be up here until June. Um, all right, so we're going to go ahead and unplug these. I can already see there's a little bit of an issue with the uh, power indicator LED, but it's all right. It's not major. Pull the amp out. And this is the part we're looking at right here, right? So you're going to go ahead and you're going to take your speaker and you're just going to kind of waddle it away. It's not needed right now. And you're going to just put it over there and we're going to go and focus on the amp. So let me go ahead and look this over really quick. Okay. This one might be a little more complicated because I'm not seeing... Um, not seeing why there would be distortion. Oh wait, no. There's something that raises a, raises an eyebrow. So let's kind of look in here. All right. Now, normally, what's going to cause distortion in one of these is you'll get a solder pad on these guys that are bad. It'll dry up, and then these contacts will come off. So I'm just going to kind of give it a wiggle. See where we're at. We're all right. I'm gonna resolder them anyway, just for uh, the sake of it. As you can see on the bottom, there's not much, uh, not much of a joint left on there. So I'm gonna redo that. Um, our transformer. Make sure that's in there, nice and tight. Still, it is. That's good. Our capacitors. Oh, hang on. Well, we got a little bit of a, a little bit of a bulge in our capacitors here, huh? But it's not a real bulge; it's just the crap they put on the outside of these. But uh, as you can see, we got a loose cap. That'll cause some issues for you. But you want to look around it for dry solder joints, because dry solder joints is what will kill one of these things. It won't kill it, but it'll make these things sound like ass the fastest. Okay. Especially look near the power connector, because sometimes if these gets loose, uh, you'll get random popping noises. Um, and get, keep in mind, guys, I'm giving you information to repairs that I do that I charge a pretty good amount of money to do, right? Like, I don't repair this sh stuff for free for people. You know, I, I charge them. Um, so right now, I'm giving you guys pretty much a, a free tutorial here of exactly what you need to do. Um, ideally, what I would do is I'd check these capacitors with a capacitor tester and check their, uh, especially if they're bulging like this, I'd check their capacitance and all that. But uh, I think we're alright for now on these. Um, you're going to check things like our resistors touching each other. Like right here, you see how they're kind of touching? So you're going to separate them just a little bit. Just because, you know, it can jump between, right? You do not want to have anything happen. And tilt your resistors up very gently. You don't want to mess them up. You don't want to accidentally knock one off the board, right? And you're going to check, make sure the pads are still good. This resistor's pad is a little bit uh, iffy. I might resolder that too while I'm in here. Uh, and make sure these ones are all good and centered up. You don't want these things touching these because these get hot and you do not want them to mess this up here. Um, you're going to check all the connections on these. This guy is the signal processor here. And this if this comes unsoldered, um, it will also cause distortion. Um, if this guy comes unsoldered, you won't have any sound, by the way. Um, and then you have your two... This is weird. Some boards don't have two of these. Some of them only have one. But um, basically, you know, these are just little... I don't know why they're using the exact same one. No, they're not. They're using an uh, MJE29 and an MJE30 over here. 
side by side. Um, stuff like that, right? But, let's see, what's this say here? Does this say 2009? No, it doesn't. Oh, it says past or something. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and just gently move these out of the way so they're not quite on the side. Sorry, you can't really see what I'm doing. I'm going to move those down just a teeny bit, just a little bit. Um, but stuff like this guy here, some of these in the older boards, they will be more wiggly than others, but see the bottom of that. I'm trying to look really quick on my own before I show you. Don't want to give any misinformation. But typically, I think we're all good there. In an ideal world, in a perfect world, I would have a can of air and then blow out all this crap from in here by the potentiometer and all that, but I don't. I don't have one on me, so we're going to have to live with it, but, uh, you know, in a perfect world, I would. Um, so, you know. Uh, you're going to check things, make sure this jumper is still on the board. At least if you're in America, I believe this jumper should be here no matter what. There should not be jumpers here. And one thing that really helps if your Mackies are overheating, and this is a dirty little trick for you guys. I don't recommend you do this unless you know absolutely what the hell you're doing. Alright, but these are little variable resistors. Right here, you see? It's going to focus. Now, if your Mackies are overheating, what you can do is take a Phillips head screwdriver and turn them down just a, just a hair. Like, watch how much I turn this down, all right? Let this go. What this does, it lowers the power by about 0.1 volts. So not enough to mess up your sound, but it does make a difference in heat. And this will help you from thermal outs and stuff. So let me let my phone focus here. Let's see if it will. There we go. All right, so you're going to go, and you're going to just barely see how little I turned that just barely turn it down same with these guys just just a hair and these are most of the time they are glued there we go so we turned them down all just a, just a hair right and the difference that will make in the amount of heat your speaker generates is absolutely phenomenal it's absolutely freaking ridiculous um, and you can check things like the fuse and all that good stuff. Our fuse is still all right. Uh, let's see here. Everything's looking good and dandy. Power switch is still plugged in right. Um, make sure we don't have any wiggly anything. Yeah, we're good. All right. Make sure there's no crap on your boards, like any hair or dust and everything. You want to give your boards a good clean off, right? While you're in here, you might as well. So, now what we're going to do is we have our soldering iron over here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to solder this sucker. So, figure out a, where to put you guys for this. Let me see here. Um, let me think. I wonder if I have a... You know what? I could probably stick it in the port of the Mackie. Let's honestly, let's see. Well, maybe not. Let's see here. It's the struggle of doing this all on your phone. You gotta find a find a way to put this crap every time, right? Oh, that's not gonna work. Alright, well, we'll figure this out in a second. Basically, what you're gonna do is you need to solder these points here, even if they look good. Just do it for the hell of it, right? Get it, uh, get it all nice and caked right there. Make sure. And when you're doing it, make sure this don't this does not touch this resistor here, right? You want to make sure everything's isolated. So you don't want these to touch there. You don't want this to touch that. Alright? Same stuff. This one's tricky because it's so close to that resistor. You do not, and I mean you do not want those suckers touching, let me tell you now. Uh, you'll turn your speaker on, you will blow that circuit faster than anything, let me tell you. Uh, your fuse will be gone and your amp may be also. So just check your connections before you power it up. Uh, this transformer's falling apart a little bit. I don't like that, but you know, what, what can you do? And, uh, yeah, you're going to just double-check a bunch of stuff like that. 
I'm also going to give these guys some new solder on here. A um, little bit on these resistors because these this one's a little bit loose for my liking. These were all right. Um, but stuff like that, all right? So we're going to do that now. So let's go ahead and flip this camera. And uh, we're going to... I'll put you guys in the speaker. There we go. And what we're going to do... Actually, you know what? I can use my uh, drones controller because I have a phone mount on it. Let me do that. Yeah, I'm gonna use. That. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna use my drone controller for that. Give me just a second here. I almost burned myself on the soldering iron. That would have been a video, huh? Sheesh. I'm alive too. All right. So I'll put you guys on the uh, drone controller, and that will uh, help a bunch with uh, angles and all that good stuff here. Let me do that. All right. So, yeah, that's better, huh? That's much better. All right, I like that a lot better. So let's go ahead and put you guys over here because the soldering iron's gonna be this direction. And we're gonna put this guy here. And we're going to try to get this at an angle where you guys can see exactly what we're doing. I think you can. So first of all, I'm going to make sure first that you're not going to melt your freaking soldering iron's cord. All right, and you're going to get a little bit of solder out. I use, uh, can't really get this anymore, I guess, because Radio Shack's gone. But uh, for the time being, I have silver bearing solder, uh, 0.15 diameter high-tech stuff. It's pretty expensive crap, honestly. It was like 20 bucks for this little roll. Um, but you're going to just heat up these points till you see the metal melt. You're going to come down and add a good, generous amount. And I mean a good, generous amount. And sometimes you want to go to the tip of the resistor a little bit, build the solder up towards it. And you'll notice a difference already underneath the resistor. If you look under there, you'll see like there's a lot of solder on the bottom of the board, which is what you want. You want this to make a good connection with both sides because there's traces on both sides of these. Um, and then you're going to go and you're going to do the same thing on the other side here. Okay. So on that same guy on the other side, you're going to go ahead and you're going to heat this guy up. I'm trying to see if you can see it better. I'm trying to get a good angle because I want you guys to be able to do this. But and again, right? It's a live stream. Um, and some of this older solder will take a while to heat up. These boards are from 1999, and the crap they used back then was absolutely industrial, ridiculous stuff. All right, so now that that's looking all good and hot, I'm going to stick a bunch of solder on there. And you can already probably tell a difference. I'll show you a before and after of my other point, all right? So let me put my soldering iron down. So before looks like this. All right, here's the point I'm going to do next, I think. Yeah, yeah, right here. So that's our before. See how there's not very much solder on there at all. It's really hard to see. Let me flip my uh, phone's live stream here. Let me get this a good shot. Here's our before shot. See how there's not that much underneath. There's really not that much. Now here's after. See how much more solder there is there and there? All right, you want to make sure you're getting a really good connection, especially these guys here. See how little amount of solder there is there? You don't want that, all right? You want to make sure you're getting a pretty good amount on there. So I'm going to try to get a close-up shot of this here for you, of me soldering here. Let's see if I can. I'm try to. But it's right here. So there it is, all right? So now, again, you're just going to heat it up. This is going to be weird to do at this angle. It's kind of sucky. Let me put the drone controller here. This will make it easier on me. I'm trying to make sure you guys can see it, though, at the same time, because I want to... It's a learning thing for you guys, right? Oh, damn it. I just messed my phone up, too. Of course. Uh, okay, let's see here. Still trying to, I'm using a, a DJI Phantom controller to hold my phone right now. So you. Um, Alright. Stop wiggling. 
I apologize for any of the shaky here. You know what? That is not going to work. Let me go ahead and put the controller back here. That just was working the best, wasn't it? I think it was. All right. Well, we're trying, all right? We're trying, guys. Uh, all right, so we're going to go right at there. And you can see right there where we're going to solder, right? We're going to do this point here. And so what we're going to do is you're going to come up and do the same thing as you did last time. You're going to heat it up really nice. And I showed you the before shot. You're going to heat it up. And there's not a lot of solder on this. So this one might, uh, if you don't have a lot of solder, you, it might be hard for you to tell when it's hot. Um, but you'll be able to kind of see it's almost like a quick tsunami wave, it looks like, right on the pad of metal. It's really weird. And you're going to heat it up. And you can see how I'm going to the top of the resistor a little bit there, too. The top of the... Uh, contact so the solder builds a mountain up to the contact. You see that? You want to make sure you're not touching any other components in here when you're doing this. And you're going to blow on it, make sure it's cool. Um, and then underneath it you're going to see this amazingness. You ready for this? Now underneath it there's our resistor and there's underneath. See how much more solders on that pad? Beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. And that's a giant ground lead going down that. So do not worry about that touching other things in there. You are A-OK. -okay. And then you're gonna solder the other side of it again, right? So now you're gonna do this guy right here. Same deal, but you're gonna solder that side. So we're gonna go right into there. Okay, and once it's hot, just gonna start touching around a little bit. It's not quite hot yet. Like I said, this stuff does take a little bit, but you're gonna keep trying every now and then. You don't wanna let it sit too long because you don't wanna burn the board. Okay, and then right when you see it start going, you gotta move quick. You don't have to move too quick. You don't gotta stress about it, but you know, and every now and then if you think you're taking a while, lift the soldering iron up. There's still a lot of heat on the board. It'll heat quick, but lift the iron up. Just give the board a little break from the heat and then continue while you readjust your grip or get more solder ready, whatever you gotta do. Just like that. See, no big deal. And I've held a soldering iron on the board a hell of a lot longer than that before and it's been okay. But now you can see how much more solder is on there. Now you have a really good connection and be careful because these are very hot. They conduct the heat very well through them. And um, then you're going to look under the board, check both connections to see if you could see anything in there that may be causing trouble. I cannot because the traces on the bottom of these boards are absolutely enormous. They keep all the uh, small circuitry on the top, which is good. You can see the traces where the bottom is just the giant thick high voltage um, traces that go to the speakers and the transformer, etc. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move this wire. You're just going to kind of do a little inspection on these guys, just kind of like look, make sure there's no cracks or anything from heat stress on any of these chips here. No, we're good, so you're going to put this wire back, okay? And uh, you're going to go ahead and solder these guys now, right? And the reason that you want to go from one resistor to the other and not go from this resistor and directly solder, if this one doesn't need soldering, I don't really care. You should do it anyway just for preventative maintenance. These boards are from 1999. So the solder joints and stuff are just going to get, they're just getting dry, you know, they're at their age, right? And uh, it is worth going through this hassle to do because these Mackie speakers, unless you're spending thousands of dollars on RCF or something, you're not going to get much better than these. Um, so now what you're going to do is you're going to get these chips here. Let me show you exactly what we're doing. So you get these guys right here. Oh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Here we are. So now you get these solder joints here and you can tell they're a little bit bare. They're not bad, but uh, they're definitely worth your time to do because anything will help, right? You want to make sure all this is getting a good connection because these are what's controlling your amplifier. So you're going to do this, not this chip here. Okay, let me show you. You're not going to do this one, although you can. I might just because it's looking a little low, but this one's the most important right here. This guy is your number one workhorse. That is what's doing pretty much all the heavy lifting in this sucker. So you're going to start at your square pad, heat it up, and this one, it, it, it does get a little bit tricky, but you know, you don't got to worry. Um, and you're going to take little breaks. You do need to take little breaks on this guy just because you do not want to overheat these chips. Just keep doing little taps, little taps until you see that solder melt, and right when you see it melt, see that? 
And then you're going to do it again, get a little more solder ready, and you're going to do little taps, little taps. And that's very important. And then you see the solder melt, you see it flow, and then you're going to go... Oh, took a little long there. It's okay. Go, And you see, I put a lot of solder on that guy. And that's good. You want to make sure these things are making a great connection. These are very high voltage. These go straight to your capacitors, all right? So then you're gonna do the same thing on the middle, little tap, little tap, little tap, and you gotta put a little bit of pressure. You gotta make sure you're getting good contact between your soldering iron and that point so you get good heat transfer, right? But you don't wanna push so hard that you're gonna rip the board up. You just gotta kinda do what you feel, right? But I, I'm not saying go and try to poke a hole in it, but rest the iron next to it. And then I saw the solder wave. There it is, it's melted, and you're gonna go. And the reason I was taking so long on that, or doing taps on the other one, is because we're right next to a other capacitor and a resistor, and you do not want to fry those. This middle one, though, you should be okay with just holding it here for a minute and soldering that on. Um, and if you end up getting a burned patch on your board, like I did here, you don't need to worry. You can see there's a little tiny, tiny dot of burn on the board when it focuses right there between those two points I don't know if you could see it it's right here right in there um, it's okay what you're gonna do is you're going to just take one of the screws maybe that you took out of the amp and you're very gently gonna just kinda scrape it off the board just a little bit just a little scrape don't hit any of the traces if the burn is on the trace <laughs> um, unless you know what you're doing I would just ignore it it's not that big of a deal um, if it's on the trace, barely. I don't want you to put any pressure. It may take a while, but just sit there and keep gently, gently scraping at it until it comes off. Um, you may have to grab something and stick it in and kind of like maneuver it out, right? You know, because it doesn't exactly come up very well. So maybe if you have like a piece of tape laying around, like from that transformer or whatever, just kind of wipe it off until you can blow it off, right? All right. And we have one more pad on that guy. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna go right into here, and you're gonna go shabam. And you're just gonna hold it, and right when you see that liquefy, you're going to just and add a pretty generous amount of solder. However, make sure, remember what I said before, don't let these two pads touch, the resistor pad and that pad. Um, if they end up touching, you can maneuver your soldering iron around, just make sure that they, uh, are not touching when you power the board on. So you're gonna do a visual inspection when you're done. So don't be don't worry about anything here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and now we're gonna do this guy here just for the heck of it because we can. Um, once again, wait for the solder to look like it's melted and whoosh, done. Do it on the middle guy. Wait for the solder to look like it's melted. You'll see like a little tidal wave kind of action kind of. You'll see it uh, liquefy, and then you're just going to line up your solder, and and you're going to try to kind of push it sideways. You don't want to push your solder straight into the hole that it's going into, or you're going to end up soldering the bottom more than the top, and you need both pads to make a connection. Normally, the bottom of these is soldered very well, um, and the tops of these are not because a lot of these boards were hand-soldered. Um, this was the 90s when shit was built to last. Excuse the uh, language there. We're live. I forgot about that. Well, I didn't forget we're live, but I, you know, um, I just get very upset thinking about the fact that uh, everything from China is made awful. Um, now, that is an interesting thing. Um, because you're running AC through the soldering iron, and you're more than likely going to have an AC current running at the tip of that, if you, when you touch this chip, you'll hear the transformer kind of making a buzzing noise. Do not worry about that. You are okay. There is nothing damaging the board. All you're doing is you're powering off the secondary instead of the primary, and it's just kind of doing this weird thing. There is no damage that will happen from that. Honestly, a lot of the sounds you're going to hear off of these boards while you're soldering them is probably just the fact they're so damn old. Once the heat hits them and they start to expand, you're just hearing little tiny, like, hisses and sizzles or any moisture boiling out of the board. All right? because um, these things do collect a pretty good amount of moisture. They're just hard breadboard, right? So whatever. Um, now that those looking good, um, as you can see, let me show you my uh, joints here. Um, 
I know this is kind of a long live stream, but bear with me, guys. Um, you can see all of our solder joints are looking very good. This is a full-on refurb video, guys, by the way. So if you're watching this, this is literally one of the only videos you're ever going to need to watch if you need to ever refurb a 450 original. Um, I have not worked on V2s yet, uh, mostly just because when someone tells me they have a V2 that needs repair, um, I normally tell them they're fucked. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't quite say it like that, but uh, normally V2s are a lot harder to repair because they're so computerized. Mackie just changed everything. You know, they have the new DSP protection, and they're supposedly 1,000 watts, but when you look at the chips inside of them, they're really only putting out about 200 watts. Um, so it's all just a bunch of BS, right? Um... That's why I only like working on the older ones. I will work on newer ones if I need to, but the older ones are definitely more forgiving if you haven't worked on stuff before. Because um, the newer ones, they, they're they really, they're just a bunch of like these propeller chips, just like big programmed microcontrollers and those things, right? So we're going to go ahead and make sure our workstation's a little bit clean, right? Just make sure everything's kind of tidied up here because I hate working with solder in a messy area because... If any shit goes wrong and you burn yourself, it's mostly because there was a mess and you couldn't grab something or you grabbed the wrong thing. You just want to make sure there's no clutter. Um, Alright, so now we've gotten these. There's a couple other little points in here that I don't really like the looks of right now. Um, so I'm going to do those while I'm in here. Uh, basically, I've shown you how to solder two of these chips, so I want you to just do that exact same thing. Every single time you see a chip in here you don't like the looks of, like, oh, that could use a little more solder. Use your best judgment and just freaking do it. Don't really think anything of it. Just do it, right? That's what you need to do. Just make sure that when you're done, none of the pads are touching anything else. Like, no no two pads are connected and stuff. And you can pretty much, if you really have the patience for it, um, you can resolder pretty much these all these chips. If you really had patience, I'd probably hire you if you did this, but... Um, if you manage to resolder an entire one of these boards by hand, and I'm talking everything, the resistors, all of it, um, I would honestly probably give you a job right on the spot if you sent me a video of you soldering a, a whole SRM450 V1 board by hand, like everything, every little resistor, every tiny thing, I would definitely hire you and I would pay you pretty well. Because I know how to do it, a lot of people don't, because uh, it, it does take a pretty good amount of skill, and I mean hand solder, don't do that shit that, um, what's he do, uh, Lewis, Lewis Tech, or Lewis something, um, he does this computer repair shop in New York, and I'm not dissing him, I'm not, his repair videos are absolutely top class, just awesome videos that he makes, um, but the methods he uses for board level repairs on MacBooks and stuff is not gonna work on one of these, just because these chips are so huge, and you're not really replacing an SMC on here, you're replacing like a, um, a voltage switch or something like that, right, like one of these guys, and that's easy, um, you know, just eight pins on a little tiny chip, these are very hard to do, um, if you don't have to resolder these, uh, I wouldn't, but the reason I'm doing it is because of the fact, like I said, I freaking know how to, and I can, and a lot of the times, you can honestly touch the top of this pin, and the soldering iron is so hot, that it has enough contact to get all the way down. So you just touch the top of the pin right above the solder point, and the heat will go all the way through that and melt the solder around it at the bottom. Just gonna kinda keep working it, right? <laughs> and I pushed that other center pin down a little bit farther than I wanted, but you know, it's all right, we'll be all right. And you're just gonna kinda Hold that heat there for a second until you see that solder melt or until you push the thing all the way through the board like I just did. And you're going to add a little bit of solder. And I think I just touched my hair with the soldering iron, so that's cool. Um, Gabriel is going to kill me for that one, for messing up my hair, but whatever. Um, Alright, we're going to do the same thing here. Just a little bit of solder. And the only reason I'm really doing this is just because... You know, for me, it's preventative maintenance. For you, it might not matter, but for me, um, I just want to keep this amp in the best shape I can. Because if I ever have one of my Italy's or something go out, this is going to be my donor board. Even though this board works 
It's good to have a 100% working donor board. Rather than just swapping out, let's say my Italy one goes out, rather than just putting in this USA board, I want to be able to repair my original Italy. All right? So you want to make sure your donor boards are in good shape, too. And if you don't, you want to make sure you know what's wrong with your donor boards so you don't accidentally grab the part off the donor board that happened to be messing up your whole board. Um, you know, then you know you get a good repair. You know, you just need to know what's wrong with it, know what parts are good, what's are not. And it'll be pretty obvious once you uh, replace a part on your other board, if you replace the part and it still doesn't work, it'll be pretty obvious that uh, either you didn't know what you were doing and you replaced the wrong thing, or the part you grabbed was bad. Almost. Keep going on these a little bit. My solder keeps bending. It's annoying. This one's a pain because you got to get around this little capacitor and two resistors. I think I think that's a capacitor. I haven't really looked at the schematic. I can tell you right now. Yes, it is. It's a 500 volt uh, five uh, nanofarad capacitor very tiny that wouldn't do any damage to you all right so those are all soldered this guy's solder pads are a little bit thin I don't like that so I'm going to move this cord and we're going to bend this hook up so we don't melt it off all right and we're going to re-solder that too and you guys are probably bored out of your damn minds unless you're completely into this stuff you probably could give a rat's ass less uh, if you don't like what I'm doing right now come back to my channel a different day and or just go to my channel and watch some of my other content, like my parodies and all that stuff. But this is what I do on the side. All right, so this guy right here has some pretty thin leads and a pretty thin, pretty small solder pad on it. So I'm just going to give it the benefit of the doubt of working and uh, just help it out a little bit. So I'm going to stick my soldering iron in there, get it nice and hot. And just add a little bit of extra for it right there, you know, just, just to keep it happy. Oh, it didn't really work. It balled up on the end of my iron. There we go. And we'll do the same thing right here on this trace because this is a pretty thick trace. And obviously it's going to be, with a trace that thick on one of these boards, Yeah, it's pretty safe to assume they're dealing with some uh, substantial voltage here. So we're just going to make sure. I have a feeling it's an air packs chip that might be your overload protection. So that might be what's monitoring like the signal to the woofer. Um, and once it surpasses a certain amount of wattage, what it does is it sends a signal out to the other side of this lead here and probably into some resistors. And it probably triggers one of these controllers to say, hey, flash the peak LED. That's what I'm assuming that is. Um, could be wrong. Like I said, I have not looked at the diagram of this board in a long time. I have the diagram somewhere, but I have not looked at it in a long time. Oh, got some stuff crap, some crap stuck on the end of my iron. I don't know what the heck that is. It's like a hair or something. Oh yeah, that's right. I touched it with my hair. That was one of my hair stuck on the soldering iron. God, that smells gross. Burned human hair is disgusting, guys. Yuck. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go right into this resistor just a little bit. Being careful not to touch anything around it like uh, these little chips because those little chips are pretty sensitive. They're pretty tiny. Not only that, if you get them hot enough, the pads and stuff are so close together you might just fuse the pads together. Or even worse, you might just kill the chip which is also very easy to do at this temperature. None of the stuff in this board is made to get as hot as this soldering iron. You're literally melting metal. <sighs> Alright. Um, and then I'm going to go, like I said earlier, I'm going to go back to these resistors and help them out a little bit because uh, when we bent them, one of them felt a little bit loose, and I did not like that at all. So, you're just going to go in, and you're going to just load this guy up. And these resistors, you really want to be generous with the solder on them because these are handling some pretty they're handling a lot of juice oh, I was just touching the end of a capacitor there oops 
No, it's okay. You just gotta really watch out. See, I just did exactly what I told you guys not to do. And I wasn't paying attention. And I totally just burned the tip of the capacitor. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. And now, if this was a, a customer's board, I wouldn't be an asshole. I would replace that capacitor for them. Whether I knew it was still good or not, I do not like to damage other people's shit and then not make it right. I'm not that kind of a person. Um, plus, I would want someone to do the same for me. If someone's soldering iron accidentally slips and they freaking melt part of it off, I don't care if it works or not, you know, make it right, you damaged it, maybe you should replace it, right? Unless it is absolutely a ridiculous part, like, let's say the part costs, let's say you accidentally touched this transformer, and it melts a teeny, teeny little piece of the plastic, right? That transformer will cost you a couple hundred bucks. You're not going to do that. Just tell the, and if the client ever, you know, just tell them, be like, hey, you know, Everything still works. If you feel bad about it, tell them. If not, just don't. Um, give it a good test. Check continuity of it. Um, just to make sure none of your... And check continuity of it before you plug it in. Make sure your primaries and secondaries aren't shorting. Stuff like that, if that happens to you. But, um, you know, if you still feel like an asshole about it, then maybe just tell the customer, be like, hey, my soldering iron slipped, and a little tiny piece of this plastic tape they wrap around to protect the transformer melted just a itty bitty bit maybe even take a picture of it so, so you're ready to show them just like it was just this little tiny bit um, but it's like a two hundred dollar part so I was not really able to replace it for you otherwise I would have right something like that but most of the time I bet you they won't care so we're gonna keep this guy here keep it nice and juiced up on those pads I want these pads to be really, really conductive. They need to be. These, like I said, these resistors are handling a lot. Now, this is going to be a tricky one. I would not, I would recommend, if you got a solder down here, I would just bring the board into me. <laughs> and that's not me trying to get money off of you. That's me literally saying, if you slip your iron down here and you touch these big capacitors or you touch that connector, uh, or you accidentally touch the silicone of these resistors, you are fucked. Um, you're going to have to replace your resistors and you're going to have to replace the capacitor one slip down in this area and you will kill your Mackie so this you want precision and you want a guarantee on it so if you're doing this on your own and you say hey you know the part that needs to be resoldered or the part that needs to be replaced is right here it's you know R260 which is what I'm working on right now but if you come in and tell me R260 needs to be replaced or resoldered, I will be like, okay, I can do that for you. Because you should not do that on your own. <laughs> That's just one of those things where it's like trying to replace your own SMC in New York. You should just take it to Lewis and let him do it for you because he knows what he's doing. Where, you know, something like that. Because you don't want to melt these connectors and you do not, absolutely do not want to melt your resistors which is also easy to do, and you're working with very hot heat right next to something that can potentially explode in your face. Especially if they are bulging. Like these ones are. <laughs> so, yeah. Make sure we get a good connection down there. It's not melting, which is scary. I don't like having the heat in this area of the board this long. Well, hang on. Yeah, this is a, like I said, like, this is a sketchy repair here. You gotta know what you're doing. Right now I'm working on R245. And it is a very weird repair. Uh, I've already touched, the, I didn't touch the capacitor, but just getting close to that capacitor is like, I'm gonna break the end of that piece of solder off. It was messed up. Um, just getting close to that capacitor has already started to shrink the coating around it. And you don't want to do that because you're going to put too much pressure on the capacitor itself. And uh, also you that you are potentially clogging the vent. So if this capacitor ever decides it needs to explode, rather than venting the right way, it will literally do what I just said. It will blow the hell up. And uh, more often than not, it will do that in the middle of a gig, which is always fun. There's an air bubble in this solder point. I don't want that. No air bubbles. Just kind of... Retap that solder onto there for it. Just add a little bit more on it. There we go. 
Um, all right, and then we get very close to the capacitors. This one is even sketchier because now you're working it directly next to them. So right, once again, we're working on R260, and we are right next to the capacitor. And we are working on R260 on the connector side. So we get right into there. Now, if you're not watching this live, you're watching this later on, which I'm sure most of you are, um, and you want to see the finished product, I would just skip to that part. Unless the live stream for some reason crashes, then you'll know. All right. I'm confident we have a pretty good connection in that. Let's see the bottom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're good. Yep, we are all right. Perfect. Well, I like that. That looks good. Um, what else was in here that I was going to look at? I think that was those. I already told you guys to turn those things down a little bit on those. This one has a little bit of a crack on the solder pad, so I'm going to redo this one a little bit too, just to be safe. I think I just redid it, but you know what? It doesn't hurt to do it again. get that to dry and look at our board I believe we're all right yeah we're good we are all good make sure everything's still attached nice and all right in there these are good our diodes are all right looking like everything is soldered nice and well again see still kind of sketched out about this so I'm gonna do this now a lot of times you will not ever have to do this part but you know what no I'm not I'm not gonna do that I was gonna take the board off and check these capacitors but you know what considering I was still passing sound to this board before I did this I am not worried about those capacitors being bad right now now if you were getting some severe buzzing or something then I would check the caps but because we weren't, I am not too worried about it at all. So I'm just going to check these, make sure everything looks good in there. Yeah, it does. And you're just going to do a visual inspection, right? Just kind of inspect your work, make sure everything's looking all right. Mm -hmm. the resistors are looking good. Capacitors don't look too damaged. Har har. Um, those are looking all right. Now this one can use a little bit right here. I don't like how that looks. These, these you don't want to mess with either. Because these also have some high voltage, and they're right next to the capacitors, meaning you might get a nasty jump off of one of these if you do not know absolutely what the hell you're doing. So maybe let me do this one for you too. And this is on D55. D55 and D56. You don't want to be messing with either. But you need to build up quite a bit of heat in order to do anything with them. Which is not really happening, is it? Well, what we'll do then is we'll just get next to it with the soldering iron. And we'll just add some solder onto the pad just around it. There we go. That looks better. All right, everything is looking good there. I think everything's looking good over here too. Let's just double check. I uh, don't see any dry solder pads anymore, which is good. Okay, I'm thinking that this board is probably pretty good. Uh, let's see what else are we pulling on here. I think those are all right. And I'm just kind of doing a visual inspection down the board. 
Look under there. Yep. And, oh, I'm getting some Skype messages. Hang tight. All right, we're all right. Um, holy crap, hold on a second, guys. What is going on? Okay, sorry. <laughs> just had to grab something there. I had to type a message. All right, the board is looking nice and good. I think it's safe to say that we're all right. Um, I did a quick visual inspection on it, looking around. I think it is safe to say this board... Oh, there's an air bubble in that resistor there. <laughs> this is why you do it. That's the last one I'm going to do. And then I'm going to say that this board is done. Um, but, because this is a pain in the ass. These resistors suck to do. So you got to get right down in them. There we go. Okay. Now I think we're good. I'm going to do this one too. This one is one that I didn't do. I always redo these bigger resistors. Just to give them the benefit of the doubt of working. It's more preventative maintenance than anything, to be honest with you guys. Whether it needs it or not, if it's if you if you think you are comfortable resoldering it, just put a little extra on because these pads are old. Just like that. This is R one eighty three. Just like that. See, all right. Now I think we're safe to say this board is good. And then what we'll do is we'll move our wire back down, latch it in all good and pretty there. Make sure this is good. Kind of really press down on it, make sure it's in there. Um, kind of make sure everything looks good. I'm thinking it looks fine. And this transformer is a little bit loose, as you can see. So we will fix that here now, too, which is easy to do. Let me just. Unplug my soldering iron. We're going to start the cool down process. And I'll grab a pair of pliers. And we'll just uh, get that transformer tightened again. Right like this. You're just going to go in there with it, and you're just going to grab it with your thing and tighten it. Just like that. There. Now it's all latched in there good again. All right. And a lot of that is probably just because when you turn the transformer on, you get that magnetic field sometimes. And, you know, the speakers are rattling around because you're playing music and you're, they're moving around at your gigs and all that. So whatever. That's just to be expected, right? Um, so now that everything is looking all nice and dandy in your board again, you're going to go ahead and put it back in your speaker. So now you're at the good part. You're at the pretty much the final parts of the repair here. So let me flip my camera. Be able to, uh, oh, I gotta rotate the device this way. Okay, and we're going to stick this guy right back in the speaker. Just that easy. Move our soldering iron out of the way. Move our solder out of the way, all that good stuff. Just like this. Right? And these are our grill screws. I think. Yeah, they are. I have a lot of screws in here. That's not a grill screw. These are grill screws. Yeah, those are the grill screws. Alright, so we're going to flip our speaker down. Hang on. And then you're going to do the exact same process the other way. So, we will put the amp back in the speaker, just like that, transformer on top, and you're going to line it up, and you're going to plug in, you can just hold it here, plug in your LEDs to that connector right next to the uh, thing, right next to your speaker connector, 
plug in your power LED on the front, and then plug in your woofer and tweeter connection. And you're just going to lower the amp back down. Oh, well, normally you do it a lot nicer than that, but it slipped out of my hand. All right. And then you're going to go ahead and take your screws, and you're going to drop them right back in here, like so. Just like that. Like I said, you need to be gentle with them. You don't need to do too much. And I always do uh, the four corners of the amp first. I do the corners under the heat sink first. Just to make sure you know, everything is good in there. Just like that. And then you do the top one. I did a little extra tighten on that one. Um, if you haven't done them with a drill before and you don't really know the characteristics of how this cabinet feels and the screws are almost tight, um, I would just do it with a screwdriver. There we go. But I've taken apart a lot of these. I don't even know how many of these I've taken apart and repaired. It's been a countless number. I think all but one of my own have all been apart at one point. Um, and had service and maintenance and stuff done on them, just preventative. All right, and we put this other screw in right here. Just like that. Bam, get that one in there a little bit hard, but it's okay. Just, you gotta, get, gotta be careful. And you're gonna go in the middle, and you're gonna go on the outsides. Oops drop the screw and and your other side here and now you are done so what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it in and we're gonna give it a test so I'm gonna turn off my other Mackies that are on these stands so we know that we are just getting audio from this one that we just fixed all right Okay, so now the one we just fixed is hooked up, and I'll flip my camera, there it is, we're going to turn it on, oops, wrong switch, it's on, see that, turn on our mixer, and I'll play something royalty free, obviously, here we go, and this is the sound out of the amp we just fixed. Distortion is gone. You hear that? Listen how good that is. So, there you go. Now it sounds all better. So you hear that? So, there is no more distortion in the Mackie. That is how you do it. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.